Hiya, and welcome back to Where the Demon Lurks. The game that teaches us that Kobu is so relatable, and I feel like the only character that's slightly more relatable than Kobu is Eddie from Chord Progressions. He's just slightly more relatable. Anyways, let's just hop right in. God, did I, did I fuck up somewhere? Oh, oh shit. Oh shit. I might have fucked up. Never mind, I didn't fuck up. Oh crap, it's those guys! Buzzing around the main entrance are a group of, comprised of six goons dressed in matching black hoodies. They're peddling pamphlets and asking people passing by to sign some petition. We should go round round! Take the side entrance. But our spot is closest through the main entrance. I know, but that group always gives me a bad feeling. Maybe it's best if we avoid them. Fine. Let's go. I'm talking about where he is now. You both cross the street and head for the walkway to the right of the main entrance. Making a beeline, you slip through unnoticed by the group guarding the gate. The stealth game has begun. The side entrance to the park is within your view. This is it. We're almost there. Then a pair of hooded figures step out from the entrance to halt your way. Why, hello there, townsfolk of Kibbleton. Fuck. Right hand instinctively moves to cover King. We don't want anything you're selling. But we're not selling anything. In fact, we're giving away a great opportunity to find happiness a chance to be free a chance to take control of your own destiny sure sure thank you but I'm fine with my destiny now please move aside your tone is harsh but these two aren't taking the hint they continue staring at you with glazed eyes Oh, new potential members come come you must read our teachers wise words on how to live a longer more prosperous life Membership is open. Learn the secrets of overcoming death. Three more of them emerge from the park entrance and surround you both. Kobu! They invade your personal space and basically stampede It's time to drink both. water. The three new hooded members manage to, to split you and King apart. He's dragged a few steps it's away as they corner him against water. the wall. Listen, it's time to you drink must water. have family and friends you care about, right? Don't you want to protect them? Don't you know people are dying faster than ever before? You don't know when the cold hands of death will be knocking on your doorstep, but we do. The great teacher knows all. All you have to do is join us. Overcoming death and a free cloak. Wait. You raise your hands up trying to get them to stop. Fulfill your purpose in life. Join the Dawn Seekers and you'll be set for life. But I... Our teacher knows the way. He can save you. He can save all of us. With every word, you feel yourself getting pushed back into a corner. You don't want to spend an eternity in hell, do you? They step closer. Save your soul. This is the only chance. And closer. New members also get a brand new air fryer. Air fryer, I'm in. I'm in. They're giving... <laughs> all new members get a brand new air fryer. <laughs> I'm sold. I'm sold. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> I'll do anything for the fucking air fryer. <laughs> An air fryer that comes with five different color options. <laughs> oh god damn it. <laughs> you can you can have five different colors. <laughs> Embrace destiny and a healthier lifestyle. <laughs> uh, their voices seem to crescendo as they go on and on about their group. You're trapped. You struggle to think as every thought is cut off by their continuous chatter. Colts are nothing new. Dozens of them arrive in the underworld on a daily basis. 
though meaning them in real life is more annoying than having mosquitoes buzzing around your ear on a hot summer's afternoon. Noid, you turn to where King is. His face is pale, and even his brightly covered fleece seems deflated. He's reaching out to sign some kind of document. Stop! Wait, hang on, let me do that. Stop! Your sudden outburst stuns everyone nearby, ev effectively silencing the hooded characters who are harassing you. They back away, letting you walk over to King. You yank him by the arm as he stumbles to get walking. We're leaving, and don't any of you bother us again. You pull King harder than you intended and guide him into the park. The hooded people mutter amongst themselves, but you don't hear them. Your soul focuses on getting to your spot. Obviously, we're a kitty cat. You reach the bench you're looking for, a single seat facing the park's man-made river. The branches of the tall trees huddle together to shade the bench from the sun's rays. Sitting on the park bench, you drape your arms on the backrest and pant exhaustedly. Wow, you're really out of shape if you're that tired from walking. King bends over the bench while trying to catch his breath. We were talking. It was like a... You cough. A sprint. King chuckles heartily and sits next to you. You got the drinks? Yeah, in my bag. Help yourself. You point to the black backpack next to your leg. He grabs the bag and pulls out two bottles of lemon iced tea. Theta, I Here. just wanted to be sure you're okay. Arches was really intense and especially the finale. I'm surprised you didn't take a break. Yeah, Arches was intense. But but I got but I I can manage. Here. You take a bottle from King and down the reinvigorating tea in one big gulp. Slumping back against the bench, you let out a loud gasp as you pull the bottle away from your mouth. I can't believe they just ganged up on us like that. Someone should do something about them. Like who? The police? Shouldn't they be handling these kinds of cases? Well, I'm making a report. You know it won't work. King pulls out his phone and calls someone. Hello? Yes? Hi, this is King Demeric. I'd like to make a report. Yeah, some group in Black Hoods at the park tried to harass me into joining them. I think they're a cult. What do you mean this isn't a job for the police? They're harassing people on the streets! N no they're not hurting anyone so what you're just going to leave them be then what's the point of having you guys where am i supposed to go the gang are you kidding me stop laughing at me we need help are you just going to let these weirdos run the streets no i am not being hysterical king suddenly gasps what did you just call me miss that's it i'm obviously getting nowhere with this goodbye King angrily hangs up and sits next to you in a huff. Told you. What do you expect to happen? Cops here are in the gang's pockets. Those black hoods probably work under the radar of the gang. That's why nothing's been done about them. This is so frustrating. He rubs his temples as though trying to run the, rub the memory of the phone call away. Can we maybe just eat and move on? Let's. King grabs his bag and passes a blue Tupperware container to you. He pulls out a matching green container for himself. You open the top and you feel the gentle heat wafting through your fingertips. It's a lunchbox with two compartments. One side is a bed of rice and the other an assortment of fried chicken on a fresh, on a bed of fresh crisp salad. It's the overlord. Top of, of the rice are some steamed mustard greens and cut carrots arranged in the shape of the Divine Destiny 14 boss. King leans over to look at the lunchbox. Thank God it all stayed in place while we were running. You notice that his eyes are on you now and you, so you smile warmly. Thanks man, this is really impressive. Say that after you tried it. I know you haven't beaten the overlord in the game. But at least you can beat him with your stomach. He nudges the side of your belly. You roll your eyes at the alpaca and proceed to dig in. Mmm, this chicken is really juicy and tender. Thanks, I worked hard on seasoning it just right. King's lunchbox is the same as yours minus the decoration. Trade you my carrot for a piece of chicken? What? No, I put those there for you. Plus, mine's actually tofu, it's not chicken. Weakling. The branches sway and rustle as you fill your stomach with the overlord King prepared. So damn sweet! After the meal, you both leave the park when the coast is clear. By the time you part ways with King, the sun has begun to set. With nothing better to do around town, you return to your apartment. Your apartment building is tucked in a faraway corner of the town, as though it wished no one would find it. An odd dissonance fills you whenever you return to this part of the town. In contrast to the rest of the town, this place is devoid of businesses. Or life, for that matter. A dead end, a dead end is one way to put it. 
Not that you're complaining. You walk up the flight of stairs to the first floor where your room is. The screeching of a singing contest on the TV from the room below accompanies your climb. Typical apartment owner. An elderly man of few words. He is content as long as you pay your rent on time and don't stir up any trouble. Your key fits into the doorknob and you enter the rear room. Honey, I'm home. The silence of your mildly furnished apartment welcomes you back. Your current living arrangements are a far cry from what you had back in the underworld. The current unit you live in has the very basic accommodations. One living room that doubles as your bedroom and dining room. One washroom with a shower head that only sprays cold water. A washing machine and a toilet next to it. Then there's the tight-spaced kitchen that just barely accommodates you and the relic of a refrigerator. And yet this is all you could ever ask for. Dropping your bag on the floor, you walk over to the beanbag in front of the TV to start up your console. I should probably do my laundry while I shower later, but first, let's squeeze and run r one round of dailies. That's the last you think of your laundry, or chores for that matter, for the rest of the day. God damn it, Kobu. A portal tears open within the break room of the Demon Generals. Fortis stumbles out of the portal with shaky steps, drained of energy. He props himself up against the nearby doorframe in defiance of the gravity pushing him towards the floor. The weight of three months of non-stop work has visibly chipped away at the demon's strength. Fortis steadies himself. Good. He slaps himself. It. He slaps himself again. Together! Come on! If you're down, the staff won't work. Gotta keep the energy up. Just get your coffee and get back onto the torture floor. After psyching himself up, he briskly enters the pantry. The dust lingering in the air chokes Fortis. The pantry is hardly used these days, to say the least. Fortis walks over to the countertop, picking up his red mug. His other fellow general's allies' cups have remained untouched ever since Vendrake's coup. He bends down to get the instant coffee from the lower cabinet, but notices a translucent hand sticking out of the side. It's one of Amare's extra appendages. Wait, if he's hiding in there, that means he shouldn't be here. He devises a plan to make the other general reveal himself willingly. Fortis walks over to the nearby fridge and pulls out a bottle of lemon soda. On the side of the bottle is a note that reads property of Amare. Hmm, this fridge is full. I should probably throw some stuff out like this bottle of soda that nobody ever drinks. No! Ver Fahrenheit! He knocks his head against the ceiling of the cabinet while trying to come out of it. Pulling himself up, he walks over to Fortis, one of his extra hands rubbing his head to soothe the pain. Amari snatches the bottle from Fortis and hisses at him. Can't you see whose name is on the bottle? Whoa, whoa, calm down there, kitty. I was just joking. The cat the cat demon faces Fortis, a scowl still plastered on his face. What were you doing down there? Looking for inspiration for the new projects Vendrake has got you on? Amari scoffs. As if. I just needed some place where Vendrake's goons can't find me. They keep hovering over me while I work. Then how did you get here? Easy. I painted my face on a sack of bolts and played a tape of me knocking metal. You're kidding. Amari raises an eyebrow at Fortis. Oh, well, you better get back soon. They'll cause trouble again if they find out you're missing. Not until I come up with a new idea to take Vendrake down. Fortis lets out an exhausted sigh. This isn't the first time the scientist has been plotting against their new leader. Somehow just knowing that Amari is still adamant about fighting back stings Fortis' heart. You seen the coffee? Here. He pulls the bottle of instant coffee from his belt and passes it to Fortis. Don't use it all. It's one of the key catalysts for the weapon I'm building. Fortis keeps quiet and turns to the coffee maker. He pours the instant mix into the machine and turns it on. The grumbling of the device reverberates through the pantry. Amore. He turns to his companion, unable to maintain his facade that everything is fine. Don't you think it will be easier if you just, I don't know, just do what Vendrake says? Oh no, don't tell me you're taking his side. That's not what I mean. You didn't forget what happened last time you tried to launch your rebellion against Vendrake, did you? Don't you dare accuse me of forgetting I watched every demon that went through his, re through his new re-education program. Their lives got sucked out of their eyeballs because of those non-stop reruns of a the HR training video. By the end, they were practically empty husks of themselves. Then why are you still doing this? Because I'm doing what's right. Kobu is out there and he's the demon lord, not Vendrake. We need to fight back or he'll turn this whole company to a new hell for demons. You're supposed to be helping me. Fortis clenches his fists. Amari's questioning begins to fade as the sound of his pounding heart is all that reaches his ears. He quivers during his response. 
I, I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. The pit of shame in Fortis' heart stops him from going after his friend. He stands alone, a shadow of the proud demon he once was. Today you have the evening shift, the prime quiet time when the working mass is already on their way home after a long day of work. There are usually less customers around this time, so you sit behind the counter with your phone out to watch some videos absentmindedly. This time you're hooked on a series of videos about people going around visiting haunted houses. They even show scenes of them supposedly getting haunted by spirits and demons. You can't help but cackle every time they overreact to something happening in the house, if there's actually anything happening at all. Man, how do you watch those videos and laugh every time? They're hilarious. Look at this one, where he thinks he's been possessed and is now scooting his butt all around the floor. No, thank you. I've got to head out for a bit and deal with something at the bank. You mind watching the store while I'm gone? You can count on me. You salute King playfully. He smiles and heads out of the store. Enough time passes by for you to watch a few more. Ding dong, bing bong. Oh, a customer. You flip your phone face down and stand ready behind the cash register. Welcome to Sunny Fruits, the family market. The customer struts into the shop with a cool confidence that instantly draws you to him. Oh shit. His golden fur appears lighter than air as it sways with every step he takes. You go up as he approaches the counter. Hello. He gives you a look of amusement one would give to a pet that has done something silly. Uh, hi. You feel your left hand instinctively raising to wave at him, but you grab it with your other hand to stop yourself. Can I help you? Oh, I hope so. I'm looking for someone very important. He looks at the array of candy bars on the countertop with a furrowed brow, as though fascinated by something so foreign. Okay. I'm looking for a demon lord. Your smile shatters and you feel your veins turn icy cold. Notices your reaction and smiles. Hello, Lord Kobu. You look heavier than what you were in your photo. Shit, shit, shit. The alarms in your head are blaring. Vendrick sent someone to finish you off. Your brain tries to formulate a plan, but all you can think about is running. What do I do? The left side of your lip twitches as you force yourself to maintain a poker face. Sir, I, I think you have the wrong guy. I'm just a clerk here, but we do sell comics and manga. Maybe there's something over there about a demon lord? The dog rolls his eyes. I assure you, I never make mistakes. I have to uphold my employer's name, after all. Now enough games are coming with me. Start backing away slowly. In your head, you consider your options. You could jump over the counter and make a run for it, but then you remember the extra weight you've put on. Fighting him won't be an option either. Without your powers, fighting a demon would be like putting a child against a storm. I... Huh? In a shade of panic, a male hyena comes into your vision. His frightened eyes mirror yours as he looks at you. Wait, what? Hey, oh, is he slightly invisible? A realization comes to mind. The doorbell never dinged and the door didn't slide open. He phased straight through it. <laughs> the dog raises an eyebrow at the sight of the sudden invader. You watch the bug-eyed spectral height as the spectral hyena slams hard against something you cannot see. His body falls to the ground without a sound. Purple cracks form in midair where the hyena's head made impact. The cracks rebuild themselves and disappear as quickly as they appeared. A barrier? You turn to the dog, but he is just as stunned as you are. What the hell is going on? Well, if it isn't clearly obvious, there's a ghost in here. Suddenly, the hyena jumps back on its feet. What the? He backs away a few steps and rushes for the door again. Slam. The ghost collapses once more. Wise guy. His determination does not falter as he runs towards the barrier again and again. <laughs> Your hunter rests his chin on his hand with a confused expression. Why is he doing that? I don't think he knows we can see him. The dog rolls his eyes, annoyed that some unnecessary trouble got in the way of him doing his work. I'm putting an end to this. He raises his right hand and a glowing white feather materializes between his fingertips. With a flick of his wrist, the feather zooms towards the ghost. The ghost's body elongates and warps itself into the shape of a spring, letting the arrow fly right through and bury itself in the barrier like a bolt in a dartboard. Uh huh? The ghost sniffs at the feather and then turns to the dog. He blows a raspberry at the dog. Stay still. Although clearly annoyed, the dog stays rooted in his place, conjuring and tossing feathers relentlessly at his target. The hyena ghost laughs as he continuously dodges the attack. 
Up, down, left, right, the ghost leaps from one side of the room to the another. All the while, the dog's feathers can't even graze him. But they're not of any problem hitting every item on display. The ghost runs along the lunch aisle, a barrage of feathers following soon after and blasting open each sandwich, bento box, and a bag of crisps in their wake. What are you doing? You're pulling out your hair thinking of how you're going to explain all this to King. I'm doing my job. No, you're making a mess of the store and stop using your power. Someone's going to see you on the recording. You point to the camera right above you. Ugh, such a nuisance. The dog turns and launches a feather that cuts through the camera's wire. You gasp loudly. Ding dong, bing bong. The door's front door opens. Oh, what the hell now? The golden retriever sees his attacks. Turn to the entrance to see a stout boar enter. He's wiping his face with a handkerchief. Visible sweat stains can be seen under the boar's armpits. Ooh, some fresh weather we're having, huh? Um, welcome to ghostly fruits. I mean, sunny fruits. Uh, sir, please, it's not safe. There's a ghost here. You. The ghost leaping about and points at the boar. He grabs a bento box and throws it at him. Look out. Turns swiftly and catches the flying bento with his bandaged hand. Whoa, you break it, you buy it. You're not taking me alive! Mm, but you're not alive. The ghost grabs as many items as he can and chucks them at the boar. His throws are inconsistent, picking up the I some items and phasing through others at random. Bag of flour flies past your head and explodes its contents behind you. Everyone stay back. I can take him. What kid? Leave it to the professional. Excuse me? The dog's face contorts into a confused frown. Hey, shopkeep, catch! The boar tosses the bento box at you and pulls out an empty jar with the label honey on it. Runs forward, dodging flying foodstuffs until he's closed half the distance with the ghost. Sensing danger, the ghost makes a dash to the right. The boar raises his jar at the ghost and opens the lid. Powerful vortex of air begins to blow, sucking in the ghost. No, no! His screams are muted the moment he is sucked into the jar. Gotcha! The boar seals the jar and turns to look into your dazed eyes. And that's one successful exorcism. You stand dumbfounded by the state of the store. Training certainly never covered how to handle customers this nuts. You really ought to get a race for having to deal with this. Your heart is thumping fast and is overwhelmed by the torrential waves of fear, dread, and anger. You stomp angrily out of the counter and point at the boar. Hey, you. Me. Yes, you. And you too. You turn to the dog who's watching the scene with a cold, annoyed glare. Look at all this mess. You throw your hands in the direction of all the mess and wildly flail your arms in disbelief by what has happened. Someone needs to pay for all of this, so which of you is it? Point accusingly at the boar, then the dog. Relax, shopkeep. I was just doing my job. It took me weeks to set up this trap. Trap? You mean you planned this whole thing? You're the reason I'm in this mess in the first place? Uh, I mean, technically. But you know what they say. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. You scowl at the pig. Okay, here. Maybe this will make... Reaches for something in his pants pocket and pulls out a fist of glimmering black dust. What? Tosses the dust onto you and the dog. What in the world? The dog takes a step back and shakes his head vigorously. The moment the dust hits, your vision blurs and you feel drowsy for a second before you regain your senses. Okay, folks, here's how it went down. This shop was possessed by a violent ghost and that's how all of this happened today. He winds his stance and gestures to all the damage surrounding you. His exaggerated posing makes it hard to take him seriously. But lucky you, I'm here to help. The name's Morris Boris, professional exorcist. Here's my card. Pulls out two business cards, handing them to you and the dog. Now, for a reasonable fee, I'd be happy to come back and help you. Did I use too much bygones be bygones powder? What the hell are you talking about? You just admitted to booby trapping the store just to get that ghost. How That stuff's make, supposed to make y'all gullible as a gull. This batch defective. That powder only affects those with no supernat with no natural defenses against a supernatural mortal. Wait a minute, who are you two? I'm Lucian, a servant of God. Your suspicions are confirmed. He is not working for Fendrake. The stiffness in your shoulders eases up a bit, but you're still not wholly comfortable with an angel standing next to you. You also wonder why Gary would send someone to look for you now of all times. God, aren't you overdressed to be a priest? Think higher than that, Bacon. Bacon? Really? I haven't heard that since I was a wee lad. What about you, cashier? Don't address him so informally. He's... You nonchalantly step on the dog's foot. Eek. I can introduce myself. 
I'm Kobo. I've already had a history with seeing ghosts around me while I was growing up, and I don't need more of it now. Not exactly a lie, but you don't need anyone else knowing who you really are. Reach out and grab Morse's bandaged wrist. Now come with me. I need to make a report, and you're going to pay for the damages in the store. Pulls his arms free with more force than you anticipated. Whoa, whoa. Listen, I can pay, but I gotta turn in this little fella first. Pulls out the honey jar. Through the semi-transparent glass, you see the ghostly hyena now shrunk into the size of an eraser. He is beating against the glass. Don't let him take me! I don't want to be eaten! Eaten? Don't listen to him. The boar shakes the jar a few times, causing the ghost to scream. These ghosts will say anything to escape. I'm not making it up! He's going to send me to the giant that will eat me! Ahem. I'm afraid that isn't going to happen, Bacon. That ghost is coming with me. The hell is... The hell he is! Mortis tries to keep away the jar, but Lucian moves too quickly and has his hand on its top. Let go, Lucy! It's Lucian, and as an agent of God, I'm sending that escaped soul back to the underworld. Are you mad? This is my bounty. Keep your dirty hands off of it. No, you let go. A mortal shouldn't be tampering with these sorts of things. Low growls his rumble from both sides, their eyes locked onto one another with an easy ferocity. From the, the fur on your back suddenly stands on end. You sense some kind of familiar energy radiating from, Mortis, from Morse's bandaged hand. It's time to drink water. Your head hurts a little from all the information coming it's in. The angel, the exorcist, water. now this ghost. It's time the to drink water. The unending sense of doubt paralyzes you from moving. It's Meanwhile, time to a drink tug of water. war for the ghost in the jar breaks out in front of you. The jar is pulled from one side to another, but neither of them holds the advantage. Let go. You're just going to break the jar with your sausage fingers. These sausage fingers will be going up your nose if you don't let go. This is getting nowhere. Your eyes widen and your, hard, and your hand reaches out for the jar, seemingly acting on its own. What are you doing? Uh, Kobu, I can handle this on my own. I'm not letting anyone walk out of here with that jar, not until someone pays for all the damages! But with newfound determination, you join the struggle for the jar. Each of you pull in one direction, the jar now stays locked in the middle without budging to any side. Just stay out of this, I said I'll pay you later. Nuh-uh, it's up front or it's the police with you. This is ridiculous. We're dealing with an escaped soul, and you both can only think about money. The veins on your forehead feel like they're popping out from how strongly you're pulling on the jar. Suddenly, the jar somehow slips from everyone's grip and flies into the air. Time seems to slow down as you all watch the jar spin and come falling back down by the call of gravity. Catch it! Morse and Lucy rush, rush forward to catch the jar, but they end up running into each other. <laughs> they miss the jar, and it breaks into pieces as it lands with a loud crack. Ghost springs out of the jar, warping back to its regular size before flying out the, the door. The soul! My rent money! Shit, I gotta get it back here. If it, if it comes again, call me. Morse tosses another one of his business cards at you before darting off. Hey, wait! Oh no, that ghost is going back to the underworld. Lucian turns to you. Find me at the Lazarus Ware at the Lazarus Warehouse, Kobu. I know you need help. That's why I'm here. Just trust me and come find me so we can talk this through. But I... With that, the dog runs out of the store as well. And you, you're left all alone in the wrecked store. Looking at the mess you need to clean up, you sigh heavily. I'd start crying. In less than an hour, King returns to see you with a mop cleaning the shop. What the? I can explain. Hopefully you can explain. How? Did a mob come to loot the shop? It was an earthquake, a mini one that was just concentrated on the shop. For real? Are you alright? I'm fine, just a little shaken. Hmm... Well, HQ should probably be glad the whole store didn't come down in that case. He'll probably want the store recording as proof of what happened. Come on, let's make sure our asses are secured. Right. Both walk to the back of the counter. There's a small television tucked right under the cash register that's connected to the in-store cameras. King pulls out the remote control for the recording. Remember what time the earthquake happened? It was somewhere around the time you left the store. Alright. He presses the back button and the recording rewinds until it's the scene of the angel entering the store. Watch with bated breath for the upcoming moment. In the recording, you're both talking, then you turn to one side of the shop. Lucy then appears to be throwing his hands wildly in the air while the items on the shelves are knocked over. Well, you're handling it better than that customer. You laugh nervously. Yeah. At the point where the exorcist enters, the video recording stops. And there's nothing else left on here. I think the camera wires were chewed out by some pests. The earthquake must have been the last straw. Hmm. 
The alpaca turns to the camera above him, then back to you. Looks at you with the same calm look he gave you the first time he found you eating out of the convenience store trash a year ago. Pests stay through the wire, huh? Guess there isn't much to eat in the trash anymore. You know something is up. You almost want to tell him the truth, but doing so would only drag him into your own suffering. Yeah. King takes a deep breath and nods. I'll check the tell in the back room and make a report then. Finally, we have an excuse to replace that ancient camera. Are you okay cleaning up on your own? No, I'll be fine. Don't worry. Sweet. I'll help you with restocking the place when I'm done. King walks off into the back room. You replay the recording again. Its contents are no surprise to you. You watched it before King came back. It was a gamble hoping that King would just accept the story as is. You can only hope HQ does the same. An angel, an exorcist, and a ghost walk into a convenience store. There's a joke there somewhere. Putting the remote down, you turn your attention to the cleanup. With the task at hand, it doesn't take you it doesn't take long for you to push today's events through the back of your head. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm checking. King, Lucian. Info, Sunny Fruits. I skim it. Come closing time, you head back to your apartment for sleep. The exhaustion from the day's events really took its toll on you, as you didn't even do your dailies that night. I didn't do my dailies for Zenless Zone Zero for a couple days, actually. Come sunrise, you awaken with a message from King. What's this? Kobe, the shop's closed for three days to fix all the damage. Want to come to my place and do... DD14 all night. Your sleepy eyes widen and you tap your reply back. You send a sticker of a line with a thumbs up. See you at dinner time. Got some stuff to handle at the shop and do some chores. Okay. Setting your phone aside, you breathe easier knowing you have some time off. The, the angel, though. Memories of the angel in the store with his bright white feathers flash in your mind. Wings. Wings! You sit upright. I should bring some barbecue chicken wings to King's place and probably those baby carrots he likes to snack on, too. As you drop a list of materials to buy at the supermarket, you get up and survey your sleeping area. And the place could use a cleanup before I do anything else. Do we have to do all of it? Okay. I'm gonna put our bed away first. Better put the mattress and pillows away. Gotta make way for breakfast. You fold your blanket haphazardly into the shape of a rectangle. Eh, close enough. Tossing the blanket onto the sofa, you grab the pillows and throw them on top of the blanket. A heavy yawn escapes your lips as you bend over to grab the bottom of the mattress. <clears throat> you flip the mattress up and lean it against the wall. Ah, my weekly laundry pile. Ready for your shower, my love. Bending over the pile of clothes, you pick them up one by one. You pull out a blue t-shirt with a picture of a white minotaur on it. Ooh, ooh, this is ripe. What did I do to you? Digging back into the pile, you pull out more and more clothes. To your surprise, you suddenly have a red jock strap in your hand. When did I buy this? Probably one of the many items you have bought on impulse over the years. When you reach the bottom of the pile, you see something wrapped inside a black plastic bag. What's this? Set the other clothes aside to find out what you have just uncovered. Loud crackling sounds follow as you reach into the bag. Fingers touch something soft like fabric. Clothes? But why did I keep them in here? We're just you at the side of the old shirt and jacket you wore from when that night happened. Nox, what are you doing? Run, boss! Your time is over, Kobu. No one's going to save you, especially not them. You shudder from the memories and stuff the clothes back into the plastic bag. Nope, I don't need this again. Frustration's boiling, you walk over to the kitchen with the plastic bag. You open the rubbish bin lid and ready yourself to throw the clothes inside, but you find yourself unable to do so. To heck with this. Walk back out into the living room and toss the plastic bag right where you found it. Out of sight, out of mind. Hugging the pile of clothes you sorted, you, pros you, proceed to do you proceed to do your laundry in the washroom before heading back to complete the rest of your chores. The coffee table you usually have your meals on is cluttered with so many instant noodle cups that you actually built a tower up to your waist. Alright, my little city, time for an early de demolition. This job would go a lot quicker if I could still open portals. Just for the fun of it, you try to cast open a portal on the table. A tiny portal the size of a penny appears. Crap, it really opened?! You bend over the table to see how your portal is working. Peering through the tiny circle, you see the top of your landlord's vault spot. Yeah, no. Portal failed to appear at the dump as you envisioned. It takes a few minutes for you to close the portal, as usual. Your powers have been on the fritz since the fight. Sighing in defeat, you disassemble the tower manually and throw the cups away. You take a quick shower and change into your Sunday best. A simple clean t-shirt and shorts before heading out. 
buzzing sensation in your pants grabs your attention. Reminder you said on your phone is going off. Supermarket sale today. Don't miss it this time. Crap! Nearly forgot. Lucky you. The day off means you'll actually be able to make it to the sale. At least some good has come from your recent tribulations. With a skip in your step, you make haste to leave your unit. You gotta run! You begin your brisk walk to the supermarket. Clear blue skies and the gentle rays of the morning sun caress your face, welcoming you to the new day. You continue to browse your phone while you walk. Page after page of the latest anime news floods your feed with the occasional intermittent ad thrown in between. Mind is blank while your legs are on autopilot, the news just serving as a distraction while your body recounts its a familiar route to your destination. You can practically get there with your eyes closed at this point. A habit you quickly regret when... There you are. You snap out of it and your legs stumble to a halt. Huh? Peering past your phone, you meet the exasperated gaze of yesterday's angel. Lucy! It's Lucy and also Lord Kobu. Where have you been? I waited for you the whole night and you were no-show. Whoa, what's with all this Lord stuff? I don't get what you're talking- I don't know what you're talking about. Angel crosses his arms and glares at you. Really, you're still putting on that farce after what happened yesterday. You roll your eyes at him and toss your hands up in the air in a half-hearted act of surrender. Fine, I'm the ex-demon lord. There, your scavenger hunt is over. You can go home and claim your prize. He follows beside you. I'm not getting my promotion from just finding you. I need to fix the underworld. Your pace hastens as your pace hastens as you are nearing your destination. Look. You turn to Lucien and point accusingly at him. I have nothing to do with the underworld anymore. That part of my life is long gone. Go talk to the fat ass that's running the place now. Vendrake is the problem. He's causing a bigger rift between the underworld and up above. Not to mention the number of escaped souls has skyrocketed. Things keep up this way, it would mean hell for everyone, figuratively and literally. Somehow hearing the angel's complaints is giving you deja vu about having being back in the office with Vendrake. A sensation you find most unpleasant. Not my problem. Right now I have more important things to deal with. What can be more important than the fate of both our companies? Crap, I'm too late! Huh? A crowd is formed surrounding the front of the supermarket. Even while standing on tiptoes, the entrance is barely visible. Damn it! I was really betting on there being less people than on a weekday. What am I looking at? It's sales day. The supermarket has discounts on almost everything in stock, but that's not why people come here. Biggest prizes are these rare and limited edition extra discount stickers that are only given to a handful of customers by one of the staff. Gotta get my hands on one of those extra discount stickers. Discounts. The angel face palms himself and gives you a disparaging scowl. Oh, they're letting us in! We'll see you, Lucy! Wait! What? What? Come back! Before you can finish, you've already merged with the sea of customers funneling into the store. Inside, the place is packed with hundreds of people bumping and elbowing one another in the limited space to get from behind the counters to the aisles. You scan the area for any signs of staff giving out discount stickers. Discount stickers! Spotting a small crowd circling around something in the vegetable aisle, you head over there. Your hunch is right. A young staff member is holding out a discount sticker in one hand. That's right, everyone. I've got the last sticker here. My boss left me to decide on how to give it away. So if you think you're the most charming person, come on up. The crowd erupts with cheers as they try to grab the staff's attention. No, wait, it's me! Not wanting to be outdone, you push it to the center of the circle. Hi there, so you think you're the most charming person in the store? Damn right I am. You flash her your best smile while she looks you from top to bottom. Staff pulls a sticker from another bundle and sticks it on your chest. Past sell-by date. Your jaw drops. She then turns back to the crowd. Anyone else want to give it a try? I'm looking for the most charming person to get this. She holds up the discount sticker up in the air. Thank you. A golden furry hand reaches out and snatches the sticker from the staff's hand. Hey, you can't do that. Lucian steps through the crowd. You see the staff's cheek turn cheeks turn rosy red, transfixed upon the angel's face. Thank you, mortal. Your services won't be needed further. He speaks to her in a very matter-of-factly tone. Oh, uh, it's no big deal. I'm just doing my job. She is practically beaming at him with the kind of smile someone gives as though they had just been told they were the most important and most alluring person in the world. <laughs> Even the rest of her body betrays her as she puffs out her chest while bringing both of her arms back. Her shoulders swing in response to his looks. Listen, my shift and Lucien walks past her to meet you, extending his arm to dangle the sticker in front of your face. Here, I got this for you. A collective ooh washes over the crowd. N no, it's no, it's not like that. We've just met. You shake your hands and look about in desperation to try to defuse everyone else's expectations. Meanwhile, Lucien looks at you with a raised eyebrow, wondering why you are looking so flustered. Oh, <laughs> all right, everyone, that's all of the, the discount stickers. Please enjoy the rest of sales day. Crowd breaks away, and as they do, you can overhear some of them calling you both a cute couple. Hello, did you want this or not? 
grab him by the arm and escort him to a secluded corner away from prying ears. Thanks, but why did you help me get it? He maintains his disinterest. Look, I don't know what happened to you that got you kicked out of the underworld, and quite honestly, I don't care. However, Gary thinks you are the person to set things right. If it means I have to get you a hundred more discount stickers for you to work with me, I will. You find yourself drawn to the burning determination in his eyes. The kind of eyes that you once had years ago, just prettier. Well, but thanks for the sticker. Don't mention it, Lord Kobu. Just Kobu. Lucia nods. Well, if you don't mind, I've got some shopping to do. Then I'll tag along. Eh, no. I appreciate the help with the sticker, but I've got a date with a good friend, so today's not a good day for this. Fine, I'll consider this as you taking time to think about what I've said. But to know that I will come back for you. Lucian, don't say that. People will really think we have something going on. You tease him by pursing your lips to make the obnoxious kissing sounds. His eyebrows furrow and he crosses his arms. As you watch him walk away, a thought lingers in your mind. Going back, huh? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I cannot... I cannot get the thought of Kobu and Lucian just being gay for each other out of my head. I cannot get that out of my head. It would be so precious. It would be so precious. Because you you have you have boy failure Kobu and pretty boy Lucian. They would be so cute. OTP, one true pairing. They, I, mm, mm. An image flashes from the depths of your, of your consciousness, a memory of you walking the dark roads to this town. You grip your chest as a familiar sting stabs your heart. What am I doing? I gotta get this done and get ready to go to King's Place. Turning your attention back to the task at hand, you banish the memory back to the recesses of your mind. After completing your shopping, you return home to pack your clothes and everything else you want to bring over for tonight. To pass the time until evening comes, you binge watch a new drama show on your laptop. The sun is set by the time you arrive at King's doorstep. Cool night air continuously blows against your mane, a perk of living at a high-rise apartment. You reach out with your free hand and ring the doorbell. When the door opens, a gentle waft of rice and something fried tickles your nose, followed by the faint, earthy scent of bamboo. It's a signature shampoo scent King uses. Hey, 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 cutie butt. His bright smile warms your heart, as it does every time you see him. Hey, King, I brought some salad. This will go great with other having. Come in, come in. Warm white lights greet you on the inside. As he leads you from the walkway to the living room, you take note of your surroundings. Pictures of King and his parents line the beige wall above the sofa. Across the, from the sofa, the TV is hooked up to King's laptop. On the screen, you see a video is paused on the opening of the new anime series you both just recently started watching. It's always told you that any anime or movie is better on the big screen. You also see a single coffee table in the middle of the living room, probably where you guys will be eating tonight. While I get the food, you just make yourself a home in a, at home, okay? Wait, let me help. Plus, I've got to use your microwave, too, if that's okay. And not this time, but I've already made a fresh batch of fried chicken wings for you. What? How did you know? Because that's what, you, that's what you always bring for yourself when you come over. Come on, it's my treat. You can save whatever you've got for when you get home. Perceptive as usual. Thanks. King heads for the kitchen to prepare food. In the meantime, you sit on the floor and browse through your phone. A few minutes later, King returns with two bowls of rice, a plate stacked high up with chicken wings, and the bowl of salad you brought along with an assortment of tofu dishes you've never seen before. You lick your lips hungrily while staring at the feast before you. Let's dig in. Don't mind if I do. You plunge your hands into the stack of chicken wings and practically guzzle down wing after wing in a matter of moments. On the under of the table, King carefully cuts up a piece of the tofu with his chopsticks and takes his time with his meal. As you gobble down your food, you feel your friend's gaze rest upon you. Something on your mind? King shakes his head. Oh, nothing. I'm just happy you enjoy my cooking. You swallow your last bite. Of course I do. I don't know anyone else who cooks as good as you. You should open up your own restaurant. You think so? King's eyes practically light up from your compliment. I don't know. Grab another chicken wing, but let it dangle from your hand. Come on, you're good at this. What's stopping you? Well, my parents are one thing. They still insist I use that degree of mine. Besides, what I like is watching people enjoy my food. I think some people pay for others to watch them eat. You know. What? No way. Yeah, you'd be surprised what you can find online. Grab a few more wings. Oh, right. You mind if I continue to watch the show on the TV while we eat? Agree to watch the show or ask to eat and talk. 
This is amazing. Netflix and chill with the girly. Remove the chill part and we got a deal. Sure, is this a new episode? And now just rewatching the series before you arrived. Think about episode three. I don't watch episode five, man. Shh, no spoilers. Right, right, play it. King plays, clicks a button on his laptop and the theme song to the anime plays. Both continue your dinner while watching the show. After dinner in the fifth episode of the show, the tables have been pushed to the side and King's resting his head against your shoulder. Scrolling credits are reflected in your eyes and the theme music fills the room. Your soft snoring coming from your side. King is rubbing his eyes before standing up and throwing his hands at the TV. Mizuki! Why did you hand over the better toast of time to your rival? That was the only way to travel back in time and win Senpai's love! You stand up and pat the alpaca on the shoulder. Gotta say, I'm loving the art direction for this series. King wipes his eyes once more and recomposes himself. He turns to you, smiling. I know, right? The heroine is fabulous! I just adore that uniform they give her! I'll admit I wasn't 100% on board with her redesign. You and the hundreds of so-called fans of the visual novel online. But I think it's rowing on me. The studio did a great job, especially with that running to school toast scene. Ah, I'm going to be late to school! He playfully swings his arms back and forth to reenact the scene he just described. You play along and softly nudge your stomach against King. Here comes the legendary truck! Oh no! He does a twirl and poses as he has been rendered unconscious. <laughs> oh no! King Kun has been attacked by Truck Senpai! to be with my beloved senpai are forever dashed. No, I mustn't give up. For senpai! Senpai! You both cross arms to form the X that Mizuki does in the show. Senpai! Embarrassment and joy color your cheeks red, yet something about this moment just feels right. The two of you break your pose and laugh loudly with each other. You think they'll ever let Mizuki be with Senpai? They have to, she's the main character. Plus, she suffered so much traveling back in time to get her Senpai's attention. She deserves it. Frieza! It's no, time it's to drink that. water. Dio! It's time to drink water. But if you play the visual novel that the anime is based on, Mizuki water. has a chance to not end up with Senpai. It's no time way! To drink water. For reals, you gotta try it, it's a classic. All right, looks like we should probably clean up. Let me, it's the least I can do. Start stacking the plates and utensils before getting ready to head to the kitchen. Hold up, take this. He walks over to you and holds up a yellow piece of paper the size of a ca name card. Unknown symbols are written on it in black and red ink. A charm? Yeah, it's a spare, but I forgot to give it to you when you came in. King slips the charm into your left pocket. Woo! Where are you touching? More importantly, why do I need a charm just to do the dishes? King sighs. Because, okay, this might sound crazy, but ever since the night with the store thing, I felt a presence in my apartment. You raise an eyebrow at the alpaca. It started after work like there was something following me until I got home. Even then, there's a stiffness in my shoulders and I keep feeling uneasy like I'm being watched. Plus, last night, I saw my controller floating in midair when I came out to get something to drink. King's whole body trembles and he looks from side to side as though anticipating someone hiding behind him and listening in on this conversation. Despite what King says, you don't see any supernatural presence around him. You consider telling him that it was probably his mind playing tricks on him, but decide that would be too insensitive. Wait a minute, if there's a ghost here, why didn't you invite me over? Well, I also called in an exorcist, so I figured, eh, things would be settled before game night. I should have already been gone, been and gone by now. An exorcist? Yeah, a guy called Morris. I got his flyer while shopping for groceries last night. Him again. Hang on, let me clean all this up. I really think you need to reconsider before hiring this guy. You walk towards the kitchen. Turning on the lights, the pristine kitchen comes into view. King remains in the living room, and as the distance between you and your friend grows, you raise your voice. I mean, what do you even know about this exorcist? It could be a scam. Reaching the sink, you place all the crockery and utensils into it before letting the water run. Grab the dishwashing soap and squirt a healthy amount onto the all over the dishes. For all we know, the guys, this guy's just going to rob you blind when you aren't looking. Plate after plate, you scrub and rinse before drying them. King, do you hear me? King? King enters the kitchen. 
Kobu? Sorry, the guy I called. He's about to arrive. I've got to head down and show him the way up. You sigh. King. Just keep the charm with you and you'll be safe. But if you're worried, you can wait outside till I come back. All right, I'll see you when I get back. You turn your attention back to the dishes and continue cleaning. The sound of the front door being shut echoes through the living room as King heads downstairs. Finally, that string bean is gone. You mind passing me a bag of chips? What the? You. Your jaw drops at the sight of the ghost from the store before you without a care in the world. Heck yeah, it's me. It's your old buddy, Toast. Bring it in, man. Tries to hug you, but ends up partially phasing through you, a cold tingle running down your spine as he does so. For a brief second, your heart feels heavy, a sadness that is not your own. Alarmed, you leap away from the ghost. Buddy, Toast? Why are you even... What are you even doing here? I'm here to recruit my newest partner, of course. Welcome to Toast's crew. Hearing what Toast tells you is so absurd that your brain fails to register it properly. You're insane. I'm not joining your gang of the undead. You still haven't answered my question. Why are you here in the first place? Watch the tone, Tubby. This freaking hard track you down with your funky scent. Then why did you end up following King if you were after me? Because I got lost. He lets out a hearty laugh. Look of blissful ignorance as he declares his loss of direction is both admirable and alarming. Look, you can't stay here. King's bringing the exorcist from before, and if he sees you, he won't hesitate to capture you again. <laughs> Good work, buddy. See, you're born to be part of my crew. We'll take over heaven in no time. Ghost is talking about up above. But I'm not joining your crew. Just forget about me and move on. No can't do. You saved my life before, and I always repay my debts. That's the toast way. Then repay it now by leaving. Don't bother King anymore. My life ain't that cheap, but fine. I'll hit you up later then. I'll be waiting for you behind that store of yours. No, you can't go anywhere except around me. What don't you understand? Toast laughs loudly. Don't be so shy, buddy. This this goes to show you got a leader that looks out for his underlings. Ugh. Now let me just take something for the road. Reaches for a pack of chips behind you and manages to lift it close to his chest while it phases out of his hands and falls. Whoops. Bends down to grab the bag, but it keeps slipping through his fingers. Again. And again. And again. Stupid bag, get in my hands. You don't have hands. Now he tries to use his mouth to grab it. He only manages to bite the bag for a few seconds and his mouth before falls through. Ugh. Patience reaches a breaking point. You firstly grab the bag and rush to the living room. Needily chuck the bag out the back and balcony. My chips! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> the ghost bolts for the chips and leaps off, leaps off the balcony after it. <laughs> oh my god. Or rather, he floats after it. I already feel a headache coming on, but the night is not over yet. Now for the next troublemaker. <laughs> Unlocked toast. Kobu, Mr. Morris is here. Just Morris is fun. Makes me feel old when people come in, Mr. Oh. He finally notices you leering at him ac from across the room. Hi. Mr. Morris is my friend I told you about. Nice to meet you. The boar extends his hand out to greet yours. Cautiously return his handshake. Looks like he's pretending that he has never met you before. And turns back to King. Pretty nice place you got. I can see why a ghost wouldn't hang around here. Oh no, is it my fault that I attracted an evil spirit? My parents always told me to take my charm to work, but I never did. King is practically shaking from where he is standing. No, it isn't. We don't know why ghosts do what they do entirely. But, this, but that's why I came in to help you get your home back. Thank goodness. What do we do? Well, for now, I need you to wait back at the elevator while your friend and I here set up the exorcism ritual. Me? Yes, you. You're the last one in this place. The ghost might have left some nasty curse on you, or worse, maybe you're possessed. I am not possessed. That's what a possessed person would say! God damn it, King! Hang on, Kobu will save you! King! Relax, people. We'll be sure with the ritual, so mind leaving it to us? King nods. Good luck, Kobu. Please don't be possessed. He leaves the apartment. What exactly are you playing here? I know bloody well I'm not possessed. Oh, I know that. I just figured it would be best if we had some privacy. Wouldn't it's your boyfriend hearing us, right? He's not my boyfriend. just my manager. Cool, now give it to me straight. Is there anything here? Nope. I checked. I believe you. Didn't smell any spirits when I was on my way up here. He circles the living room while glancing from side to side, perhaps curious about King's belongings. Keep your eyes on him, unsure if he would pull another trick like back in the store. Then let me show you the door. Hold it, Buster. We're not done. You still need to exercise the whole unit. What? I knew it! You're just running a scam! 
It was way too big of a coincidence that King found you. You point accusingly at the boar. Hold it, bub. I hand out my flyers to everyone, and usually they end up in the bin. If I wanted to run a scam, you wouldn't be here. You really think your pal is going to be satisfied with just being told that there's no ghost? He... Maybe? Look, I've been in this business for a long time. Being told that there's no ghost is what makes people feel better. They won't rest easy until after you do something to get rid of the ghost. Strangely, that makes sense. Wait, that's still no different from running a scam. Hey, I still cast protected charms around the place, okay? Now, you want to help with your friend or not? You can't charge King for this. You point at the board, but he pushes your hand back down. I wasn't going to. He runs the store, right? Consider this my repayment for the damage that I helped cause. You weigh what other options you have, but considering how worried King looked, there is not much you can say. Fine. What do you need me to do? Moore smiles slightly, and you instantly wonder if you made the wrong move. After a few minutes of preparations, Morse calls King back in. The alpaca looks at you in shock when he finds you sitting in the middle of the room with a random rock in one hand, an anime figurine in another, an apple on your head, and a yellow paper charm in your mouth. Kobu! What happened to you? I've condensed the evil spirit's energy around Kobu. It's up to you now to whack it out of him. Take this. God damn it! No! Take this. A broom? You're the master of the house. Dispel the evil spirit by whacking it away. Show what you, that you mean business. Me? Do it. Be gone, evil spirit. All right, I won't lose my home. Get out of my house! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that was foul. King swings his broom with tremendous force. The moment the bristles hit you on the face, you topple over. <sighs> oh my gosh, Kobo, I'm so sorry I meant to hit the apple. I'm good. You raise a thumb up as you collect yourself. The ghost has been dispelled, but we're not done yet. Glance over your stomach at the exorcist. He is barely holding in his laughter from the way his cheeks are puffed up. What do we have to do? I just need to cleanse your body of whatever curse I may have left behind. Stand still. Boar grabs King by the back of his shoulders. His hand starts... From the back of King's neck, thumbs press into his fleece, causing the alpaca to yelp. Slowly, Morse's hands move to King's shoulders, and he squeezes them with enough force to make that makes King's face contort into an expression of pure bliss. Then he faints. Just as soon, just as his body falls forward, you reach out to grab him, but Morse catches him first before setting his body gently on the floor. King, relax. I just hit the part of his body that's carrying all this tension. Usually, I don't faint like that unless they're bottling a lot of it in. <sighs> Gonna stop it for the outward break from the ads. That was beautiful. That was absolutely beautiful. Mm. King's eyes flutter open. You smile slightly upon seeing that your friend is okay. What happened? The exorcism took a lot out of you. How are you feeling? King brings his shoulder blades close to his neck and spins his arms around. I feel so much lighter. It's amazing. The exorcism worked! Kobu, look at how, how, look at how nimble my limbs are. He stretches out his hands from side to side and moves them up and down in a wave-like motion. I see them. Well, then my job here is done. Let me get you your payment. Thanks, but I'm not charging for this one. The ghost wasn't much of a challenge, so I wouldn't feel right taking your money. Nonsense. You did a wonderful job. You deserve some kind of conversation. You'll have a cup of coffee on me, and I won't hear another word about it. You guys are practically bulging out as you stare at Morse to leave. Well, if you insist, who am I to say no? Internally, you scream. To avoid chatting with Morse any further, you help King out with the coffee. We're gonna leave off here tonight. Fuck off, Morris. No one wants you here. No one likes Morris. Anyways, stay safe. Have a good night. This game is hilarious and I will see you all tomorrow.